Hi, I'm Dave Chung, Chief Medical Executive at Children's Health and UT Southwestern Medical Center. Welcome to the In the Know video series. Good afternoon. Here we have two guests, Drs. Ryan Davis and Ryan Butts. They're the co-directors of uh, Pediatric Heart Failure Program at Children's Health in UT Southwestern. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Oh, absolutely. We want to learn all about your program. I'll start just by saying I think the fact that both of us are here is probably the, the key part of our program um, in that it's a real collaboration between medical and surgical sides to take care of the entire spectrum of heart failure. It's not just medical, surgical. There's a great psychosocial team with social workers, pharmacists that are de dedicated, dietitians. And I think each member of the team has their input, and that's really incredibly important. So that multidisciplinary approach for each child is incredibly important to actually getting good outcomes and taking care of some of the sickest children. We often hear in adult sort of settings of uh, congestive heart failures and whatnot, but I'm sure the diagnosing as well as the conditions and sort of uh, how they present might be uh, quite different in infants or pediatric patients in general, right? Your teenagers are going to show up and be a little bit more like an adult, come in with chest pain, feeling short of breath with activity and whatnot. But we see this a lot more in the infants. You're going to see a lot more GI distress and more stuff that just looks like normal uh, viruses and, and often are very easily missed because heart failure in pediatrics is ridiculously rare, especially compared to our adults. So most times a kid comes in, the, the pediatrician or the ER doc is not thinking about heart failure because that's the, not the most common thing, and their symptoms are so similar. There's a, a great variation based on age. Infants are different than school age versus teenagers. There's also based on the etiology of heart failure. So adults, most of the time, it's either from cardiomyopathy, whether it be from repeated heart attacks. In children, it's a lot different. We have a lot more patients have congenital heart disease. And the way that they can present is so varied based on their actual underlying heart anatomy. So is it really more of that they are actually born with certain underlying conditions that eventually become more symptomatic rather than acquire kind of cardiomyopathy? I think a lot of kids are born with congenital heart disease that requires surgery. Some kids do come, come in with genetic cardiomyopathies or um, myocarditis inflammation in the heart that causes the heart not to work well. But there has been a dramatic increase in the number of transplants and the, the number of patients with heart failure who have congenital heart disease. And I think that a lot of that derives from we have gotten very good over the past 20 years at doing heart surgery and at getting kids who were born with very complex problems to survive the first few weeks, months, years of life. Their hearts aren't going to be able to support them for their entire life. Their hearts start to fail at some point, and then we move them towards a transplant. So speaking of transplant, so 36 last year? So Yes, 36 transplants. It was a busy year. I think that has a lot to do with really a lot of innovation and in using ventricular assist devices. We're getting a lot of patients who may have not been able to survive that time while they're waiting for transplant to transplant, and we're getting them healthier. So I mentioned 36 transplants, and so far, uh, all of them are doing well. The fact that they're doing so well afterwards, it gets back to sort of what we started with, which is the multidisciplinary nature of it and, and taking care of kids from the beginning of their diagnosis of heart failure and figure out how do we get this child not to a transplant, but through a transplant and how do we get them doing well in five years. We're very proud of the number, but I think we're equally or more proud of the fact that the kids are all doing well. And, are, and have had good experiences. And it's a lifelong, right, and connections that you establish uh, taking care of these, whether it's an infant or a toddler or, or young adults. And because I imagine transplanting, getting to where heart failure managed by transplant is one matter, but there's just continuum of care that you're going to provide, right? We have a lot of these patients come to and see us, especially the first year post-transplant, come in starting usually weekly, then every other week, then once a month. And even for the rest of their life, every three months. So you get to really know them, know their family, and you can just really have a good relationship. Is there some technical advances in actual transplanting a heart that change and evolve over time? I think the biggest technical advantages have actually been with the ventricular assist devices. The mortality risk for kids on the wait list for a heart transplant is the highest of any organ. Um, and we've managed to decrease that substantially here with our use, especially of ventricular assist devices, to help 
provide kids with effective heart blood flow and effective delivery of oxygen to their body that enables them to live in some cases, very normal lives while they're waiting for a heart transplant. The big technical change that's happened in terms of doing the transplant has been machine perfusion. The machine perfusion allows us to have the heart that's waiting to be put into the recipient's body, um, sitting there getting oxygen, doing its thing, and not getting further damaged by sitting in ice for many hours while we finish the, the recipient procedures. What are the uh, sort of some uh, research that are uh, being conducted here? Because I'm sure there's Lots and lots of uh, discoveries with Children's Health in partnership with UT Southwestern Medical Center. We are uh, leading the way in terms of looking at um, weightless mortality. In fact, we're one of the centers that are looking at weightless mortality within the whole entire U.S. as a way to uh, rechange how uh, donor organs are allocated to help reduce weight. So that's a big push. And so a lot of our research is actually tied to how can we change the field and heart failure. We're, uh, again, one of the big leaders in terms of looking at a new class of medications called SGL2 inhibitors, which have flown off and become a real big deal in adult heart failure. But how, do, how does that affect pediatrics? And I think we've led, led the way there. Such exciting stuff going on. How widely our center or the program is recognized regionally or nationally, for that matter, internationally? Um, I think our program's highly recognized both nationally and internationally. Some of that is for the innovative things we're doing um, with ventricular assist devices, but I think all of us, uh, medical side, the surgical side, get calls from other centers. How do you do this? What are you doing? Um, asking us what we're doing and how, we're, how we've been so successful at taking care of so many kids with heart failure. I wonder if you can kind of elaborate. What, what are these team members? Clearly other colleagues in cardiology and surgery, but Sort of a, just give us a little bit more in-depth. The range of people includes child life, the psychosocial team, which is a range of psychologists and psychiatrists and social workers. And we have coordinators, nurse coordinators who work on the heart failure side, on the transplant side, on the VAD side, um, and have expertise in each of those and can cross cover each other, but have expertise in all of those. Cardiology and cardiology is a big group in and of itself because it includes critical care cardiologists, the heart failure cardiologists, the inpatient cardiologist, it's a, that's a huge team. Um, the surgeons, it's a big group. And I think the critical part though is not just having them on the team, but actually listening to their, um, yeah. to their perspectives. One of the reasons I came to Children's Health was the realization that what we're doing is not just physician dependent. It really takes a lot of investment from the hospital and willing to support and, and put pharmacists and social workers into these critical roles. That's what really drives a program's ability to take care of patients and take on harder patients than they would have before. That ability to have a pharmacist who specializes in transplant, the ability to have a social worker who specializes on the heart transplant, you're gonna end up with better outcomes if you can have that team be really knowledgeable and specialized. Certainly is a big team, but you need every member to be able to make this yeah. successful. Well, you obviously are doing a great job in leading this exceptional program that's admired by many, not only regionally, but nationally. Thank you both for spending time with us today to uh, teach us and educate us on a bit more about advanced heart failure programs. And, and both of you, just incredible leaders in our system. Thank you to everyone in the, uh, in, at Children's. I think it's a small microcosm of the heart center that takes the whole heart center to take care of these kids. It also ultimately takes the whole hospital. So I yeah. appreciate everyone's help in, in doing it. Agree. All right. Thank you for both of you being here today. Thank, Thank you. you.